Yo, 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 what is up guys? Nick McKay here, Lester of Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If you're first time here, please hit that subscribe button down below. So on today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys my express maintenance or oil change routine that I feel like kind of maximizes efficiency so you can get as many cars out as you can. Especially when you're working at the dealership, you gotta be moving fast. They want you to like get these cars out in like 10, 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna show you my routine and the tools I use and kind of basically my routine, the way I go through it to service the vehicle. And it's worked for me so far. So again, there's like no right way you can do it. People do things different ways in different orders, but it all comes down to preference. So maybe you guys can pick up some tips from this video. So let's get started on the tools we're gonna be using. So I laid out all the stuff I'm gonna be using in this video right here. Um, we got tire pressure inflator, 14 wrench, oil filter wrench, uh, 3/8 impact with a 10 millimeter socket, pen, tire pressure, tire tread depth gauge, uh, pocket screwdriver, uh, mirror to inspect the brakes, and a brake measuring tool if you're unfamiliar with what the brakes look like, the sizes. Uh, flashlight, we got our oil and our oil filter. So let's get started pulling the car in and racking it up. Today we are going to be using Danny's lift, so do me a huge favor and give him a follow for letting us use this. Alright, so usually when I first pull in the car, I go ahead and reset the maintenance light just so you don't forget, so less chance of that. And before you get out of the car, it's nice if you have a mirror or somebody behind you, you can hit the brakes, make sure they check your brake lights, and then turn on the lights and the flashers, and then we can give it a quick walk around. Usually I'll come around the back, check all the lights, tail lights, signals, license plate lights, check the rear wiper insert, see if that's torn. Come back around the front, check the front lights, Wiper inserts, again, something we recommend a lot at Toyota. Uh, check the headlights, turn signals, make sure it's all good. Pop the hood, then you can go ahead and shut everything off. All right, so before I really do anything under the hood, usually I'll just come and check the cabin filter. I like to basically do the whole inspection before I even start on the car. Just pull it out. As you can see, this car doesn't have a cabin filter, so we're gonna recommend that. So also too, whenever you're like making recommendations, it's nice to have your RO right here with a pen and just writing stuff down as you go so you don't forget it. Um, so we're gonna come under the hood, pop the oil filler cap, pull the dipstick, the other kind of just things to kind of remind you later to put oil in it. And then once you're right here, I'll go ahead and do the inspection, uh, top off the windshield washer fluid, uh, inspect the side. Uh, check the drive belt, see if it's cracking, check the timing cover, valve cover for leaks, power steering pump, uh, just look for anything kind of out of the ordinary, cracked hoses, anything like that. Always check the brake fluid reservoir, see if it's dirty, you can recommend like a brake flush, so it's a nice little upsell right there. If the car does have a transmission dipstick, I'll check the fluid level, just wipe it on the glove like that. See that's pretty dirty, I would probably recommend that. And if, I, if we were at Toyota, we'd have the battery tester, so we'd go ahead and run the battery tester, and while that's going, you can also start finishing up your inspection. And then I guess the only other check under the hood is gonna be the air filter, so let's pop that off. As you can see, there's no air filter. I'm just kidding. It's a brand new air filter, so nothing to recommend there. One nice thing about Toyota, pretty much all the filters, everything's very easily accessible and easy to inspect. So it makes for nicer when you're doing express services. And also one thing I forgot to add out is uh, check the coolant reservoir. Make sure it's topped off. If it's not, top it off with your water. Usually the cars will be coming in hot, so I don't recommend popping the radiator cap, but if the car's been sitting, you can go ahead and pop that off just to make sure the coolant level's good. And again, just give it a nice once over. Look for mainly leaks, anything broken, out of the ordinary, anything that looks tampered with so you can document it. That's one thing you gotta really be uh, taken into account is checking things and covering your ass because if you don't document something and the customer brings it back saying it wasn't like this, you have nothing to cover your ass because you didn't see it. So in their eyes, it's like you messed up their car. So 
um, yeah, and rack up the car and go on from there. So we got the car racked up. Go ahead and lift it up. Every time I rack a car, I usually just double check. Just to make sure, give it a nice little shake. Last thing you want is a car to fall off, especially while doing an oil change. That'd be embarrassing. So I'm gonna go all the way up. Oh, we'll go ahead and pop this drain plug off. Hopefully it doesn't hit this splash shield and get all over me. We'll see. Oh, we're good. All right, so now that you got the oil draining, you can finish up the inspection on the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, I'll usually go around and check tire tread, make sure all the tires are good. Again, just check in for like any kind of uneven wear, flat spots, something like that, that would indicate uh, it's time for new tires. All right, uh, after I check the tires, I'll go ahead and check the brakes, usually with the mirror. You can kind of sneak it in there if you can see. You can see the pad, at least the inner pad, um, where you can check from the back just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, if you're very new to this, I recommend just taking off the wheel and then you can use one of these brake inspection tools so you can get the legit measurement. But like after you do like a couple hundred oil changes, you're gonna get really good at just being able to eyeball the brake pads so you won't have to remove the wheel. But if you're first starting off, really recommend it just to familiarize yourself with the brake pads. And another thing to keep in mind is just cause you could see the inner pad and it may be in good health, like eight millimeters, uh, try and check the outer pad, uh, especially on both sides because a lot of the times one pad might just wear down faster than the other one. And I've even had cars come back because I said the brakes were good, but one pad was very low and then it ended up biting me in the ass because I didn't do a thorough inspection. So. so coming to the back, these are drum brakes, so you're not gonna need a mirror. These are actually on this vehicle kind of difficult to see. There's only a little peak hole Very hard to see, but you just got to find the right angle for when they're drum brakes. I mean, usually you're not going to see drum brakes that often anymore, but when you do see them, just something you need to check out. Uh, if you can't see it, then just take off this rear wheel, pop off the drum, just so you get a good idea. This is kind of a bad example right here, but you guys get the point. And then since you're under the vehicle, go ahead and check the shocks, look for any leakage, check the bushings, uh, anything that's worn down and you might want to replace. So you can see on this, they're pretty good. Nothing's really that bad back here. Uh, go up under the vehicle, just check anything, fuel lines, brake lines, leaks. And coming up to the front of the vehicle, the same thing, just checking for leaks. Uh, on Toyota, it's kind of the key things I always look for is oil pan gaskets, transmission pan gaskets, uh, rear main seal. If it is leaking, you'll see kind of oil starting to come black right here in between where the trans and the engine meet. Um, another thing is axle seals. You can see on this one, this one's actually leaking pretty bad. And it's actually coming down to the back of the transmission. So in the beginning, it might be a little hard to tell sometimes when you see just oil everywhere. So I recommend just asking someone who has a little bit more experience, like, hey, what do you think's leaking? Because sometimes leaks will trick you and you'll think it's something, but it's really not. So, uh, oil leaks, inspect the radiator and the hoses, see if it's cracked or any leaks. With coolant though, it's pretty easy to tell because it'll kind of start crusting up, so. And again, you can also check here under, if you couldn't see the belt from up top, you can have, have a better angle from the bottom as well as the timing cover. Uh, so boots are a common thing that tear and you'll know immediately because you'll see grease marks spitting all over outside of the boot. That's another common issue. Um, front shocks. Basically it. Uh, as you can see here too, uh, this fender liner is coming apart. So if we were at the dealership, if anytime you see something like this, you're just going to recommend the whole fender line. Like we don't recommend just zip tying it or anything like that. We just 
recommend the whole fender liner. So this one would have recommended that, as well as the passenger side, because both of it's coming apart. So another thing that you need to check uh, on every car at state law now is tire pressure. So the tire pressure is usually on the door sill so you can get familiar with what spec to put it at. But it's also another thing you could be doing while the oil is draining. Just walk around, set, set the PSI on all of them. Air gauge isn't plugged in, but you guys get the point. So that's pretty much sums it up for our inspection. Um, like I said, it helps to write stuff down on the repair order, like all your measurements you got, anything you recommended. But a lot of times it could end up being like a laundry list of recommendations and you're not gonna remember it all and you really wanna document everything to cover your ass. So by now you would have it all written down. Uh, some people actually put it in the MPI so they can try and sell or recommend anything ahead of time, but I usually just leave it there, finish up the service, and submit the paperwork at the very end, so. So we are using an aftermarket oil filter, so when removing the old one, make sure the old O-ring doesn't stick. So that's seen, I've seen that happen a lot, that's actually happened to me, and the oil filter will leak if you do double gasket the filter. So if you are using an aftermarket filter too, just lube up the ring, because they usually don't come grease. If you're using the factory Toyota ones, they come with some nice grease on there, it's really nice. So before you lower the vehicle, always trying to remember, double check, just make sure that drain plug's tight. Sometimes you think you tightened it and you can forget it, especially when you're moving fast pace and everything's all crazy. Uh, it tends to happen, people forget things. So just double check. Just takes like an extra second or two, make sure there's no residual oil anywhere. Also just give it a nice once over again, checking for leaks, just in case you missed anything. You might catch it the second time around. Double check your work. <laughs> Oh. All right, so once you have the vehicle on the floor, really the only thing left to do is pour the oil, check the oil level, and call it a day. All right, so once you got the oil in the vehicle, go ahead and start up the car. Shut it off. Final step, check the oil level. All right, so again, you can just give it a nice double take, nice little once over, try and catch anything that you may have missed. Close the hood, uh, depending on your dealership, maybe put a loop sticker for their next service and call it a day. So another thing to add too, this was just a LOF service. A lot of times cars will come in for tire rotation and oil change. So I guess the only tweak to that is I would still do the whole inspection and cap up the oil, but before lowering it down to add oil, at that time I would do the tire rotation. So that basically sums up uh, my express maintenance or my oil change routine. I feel like that uh, routine works the best for me. It allowed me to get cars in and out efficiently. Um, obviously, if I wasn't trying to explain this uh, during work hours or something, I could probably bang this uh, simple Scion oil change out in like 10 minutes and really just helps maximize for efficiency, um, getting cars out faster and faster, uh, especially working at the dealership, they notice that. If you are on the loop rack, if they see you banging out cars like that, it's uh, really gonna help you move up to be a actual line technician, so. Hopefully these tips or this video help you out. Mm, maybe you can apply them at your work and see what happens. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, things I should have added, um, concerns. But that's it for this episode. Catch you guys later. Push!